Hello all, welcome to City Pace Education. In this video, let's discuss about frequently asked microservices interview questions and answers. Let's quickly see the questions or concepts to be discussed in this video. What is monolithic architecture? Advantages and disadvantages of it? What are microservices and advantages and disadvantages of it? Features of microservices? When to use microservices? Differences between monolithic SOA and microservices architecture? Working of microservices architecture. Also, explain how microservices communicate with each other. Spring Cloud. Service discovery with its implementation example. Fault tolerance with implementation and about circuit breaker we can see. API Gateway. Difference between Eureka Server and uh, API Gateway. What are the tests available in microservices? Where microservice can be deployed? What is monolithic architecture? Traditionally, if you want to build some application, how we will do? Just we will create one application code and under that we will put all our modules together. Like both front end, back end, everything will be under single code base. This is called monolithic architecture. So it is the traditional way of developing application where the application is developed and deployed as a single unit. And so our application code size will be very large as, as all the modules are clubbed together. Let's understand more about this by seeing architecture diagram. First one user interface. This is nothing but the site whatever user sees in the browser. Then controller layer. After going to that site user will do some operations right so all those operations will be coming as http request to this controller layer then service layer this service layer consists of business logics for that application then data access layer this data access layer is used to connect to the database let's see one example for this online shopping portal this online shopping portal consists of product search, add to cart, order, payment, delivery so these all are different modules but all, all of them are clubbed together and they are connected to single database what is the problem with this if you see here if you want to do some change in the product search and like if you want to add one more filter here means uh, then you have you, after doing the changes you need to deploy the code as whole thing even the other modules which is not changed also we have to deploy and so all these modules are tightly coupled what are the advantages and disadvantages of monolithic architecture advantages simple to develop and test since monolithic architecture consists of single code base it is easy to develop and test also easy to deploy disadvantages tightly coupled that is without affecting one uh, module we cannot change the other need to redeploy the entire application for even small change since they are tightly coupled very difficult for bug fix large in size and so difficult to manage Deployment time is more. What are microservices? We saw about monolithic architecture. The main disadvantage of that architecture is it is tightly coupled. That is all the modules are highly dependent on one another. To overcome that only this microservices came. Let's see about it. We have user interface. Now our large application is divided into small small services which is called microservices. These services are independent to each other and so our application is loosely coupled. What is that means? Example, if we have some bug in microservice 2, then simply we can do that bug fix and deploy that microservice 2 alone. This will not affect microservice 1 and 3. So this makes our application as loosely coupled. Then all of these microservices can have individual database. Even they can have shared database. For example, if microservice 1 and 2 share their database, both microservice 1 and microservice 2 they should be owner for that database okay it is an architecture where one large application is divided into loosely coupled smaller services each service will serve one business goal these services can can be independently developed tested deployed and maintained same example we can see for this online shopping portal so here as we saw earlier these are different modules and now these modules are divided into separate separate microservices and each microservice have their own database what are the advantages and drawbacks of microservices advantages first one loosely coupled since microservices are independent to each other it is loosely coupled in nature 
then can use different technologies. Even many microservices are under one application. Each of them can use different different technologies. That is one microservice can use Java technology, another microservice can use Python technology. So they are technology independent. Then easy to upgrade or bug fix because of individual deployments. Then parallel development and delivery. We can divide our large team into small small teams and parallelly each team can work on the development. Because of parallel development, our release cycles can be faster. So faster release cycles. Now let's see the drawbacks. First one, difficult to manage many services. Since many services will be there under one application, it will be difficult to manage them. And also testing will be difficult. Sometimes we may need to communicate between the microservices. So that is also complex. Then needs large team size to work in parallel for faster development. So if you have large team size only, this microservice will be useful for us. What are the features of microservices? First one, decoupling. Since microservices are independent to each other, it can be easily built, modified and scaled. Then business capability. Each microservice should have only one business goal, that is focus on single capability. Then continuous delivery. By using microservice architecture, we can do faster development and so frequent releases we can do. Then decentralized. Each microservice have ownership of data related to business functionality. That is we know microservices can have either own database or shared database. Even if two microservices share their database, both the microservice should have ownership for that data. It should not depend on one another. That is decentralized. Then polyglot. This is independent of technology. We know uh, even if many microservices are there in one application, it can be of different different technologies. Black box. Complexity of one service is hidden to other. So uh, one microservice will not have any idea about what the other microservice is doing. That is black box. When to use microservices? Considering the advantages and disadvantages of microservices, we need to know when we can go for this microservice. First one, when legacy application need to be modernized. That is, if you have some old application and that needs to be updated according to the latest technologies means, then we can go for this microservice. Reduce time to market. If client is asking for faster development and delivery, that time we can use microservice. Then if faster development is required, if different technologies can be used. Improved scalability. Since in microservices, our application can be divided into small, small services or units. Uh, so uh, we, if you want to add some features also, it will be very easy. And so uh, improved scalability will be there. Having big team with the required skill set. Obviously, if you have very small team and if you are trying to use microservice means then, then that will make the development more more complex. So it is very very important to have a required team size for that. Difference between monolithic service oriented architecture and microservice architecture. This is very very important interview question. Let's see that. Monolithic means it is a single large application where all our modules will be clubbed together. Whereas SOA means dividing this monolithic app into small small services and each of this service can do some task that is multiple task it can do and functionality level it can do and microservice means dividing this SOA services into further small small services so here this service can do single task and these services are independent to each other okay now this monolithic why it is needed means it is used to develop a simple application uh, service center architecture it is for service reusability or data sharing uh, if you have some common functionality in two modules means then we can create some so one service for that and uh, we can reuse that in both the services then microservice means it is mainly for independent services even in microservice we can have like code reusability but it is not made for that purpose it is mainly made to make the services independent let's see in theory for this Monolithic architecture means here application is built as single unit whereas service oriented architecture here it will breaks up the monolithic app into smaller services that is multiple tasks it can do. Microservice architecture further dividing the service oriented architecture into small small fine grained services. So here single task it can do. Monolithic it is tightly coupled whereas service oriented it is loosely coupled. Microservice architecture it is loosely coupled than SOA. 
monolithic architecture traditional way of building application whereas service oriented it is designed for service reusability or, or data sharing microservice architecture it is designed for hosting services independently this is very very important point example for monolithic architecture online shopping application whereas uh, service oriented google map service this service can be used uh, like a common for uh, two places like uh, for example in this online shopping application if customer uh, information if you want to store that time that place we can use this google google map service and also when the customer is required to enter the delivery address that time also this service can be used so in that both of them can be different different modules but still this service can be used as common so that is service reusability then microservice architecture here in online shopping we have something called like payment uh, uh, service so in that service uh, it can be further divided into uh, small small services so this service uh, if for example if you take credit card service it can serve only for that purpose explain how microservices communicate with each other let's understand this with the help of an example and then we'll go for theory in our online shopping application we have something called order service this is when the customer is trying to order something the service will be called and this service internally it will call payment service once it got the response it will call the delivery service so order service will send request to the payment service will wait for the response from payment service so once it got the response then only it will send request to the delivery service all these calls will be happening like a rest or http calls this type of communication is called synchronous communication here one service is sending the request and waiting for the response from the other service there is another type of communication let's see that here also we have order service which is internally calling payment service and then delivery service there is one more service called logging service which is used to log the things happening in order service so when customer orders something this order service will internally call the payment service and then once it got the response it will send request to the delivery service and will get the response at the same time logging service can log the things why it should wait for this payment service and delivery service to complete it can happen in parallel right so communication between this order service payment service and the delivery service can happen through rest or http calls as we saw earlier it is synchronous communication to make the communication in parallel in between this order service and logging service message broker is used how means this order service whenever it gets chance it will send message to this message broker and this message broker it will put that in queue so whenever logging service gets chance it will fetch that message from queue and it will log that so now this order service and logging service are independent to each other it is not waiting for a uh, response from one another this type of communication is called asynchronous communication now let's see the theory part synchronous communication client service send request and waits for the response from the another service this is synchronous communication this uses http protocol via rest it is mostly json response over http it can be done with the help of find client and rest template asynchronous communication here client service does not wait for response from the another service how here communication is made means through message protocols that is advanced message queuing protocol amqp some of the available message brokers are rabbit mq apache kafka apache active mq